the people who are making these decisions are zealots and they're incompetent. And so when you have a whole group of incompetent zealots all sitting around together, I mean, didn't work out well for the Soviet Union. I'm just going to say it right. You actually don't want people sitting around you who don't really know anything. And all they want to do is stick to the party line and orthodoxy so that they can maintain their position and their power. And I think that's unfortunately a window into the Biden regime right now. How is it possible that all of you, that Buck, that me, all of you in all 50 states and around the world could see inflation brewing almost from the moment that we started the lockdowns? And you could go back to the tape and you could listen to Buck and I saying, you know, spending $1.9 trillion additional dollars, totally unnecessary for COVID. Maybe this $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill doesn't make a lot of sense. We gave tons of people tons of money not to work. And then they bid up the price of goods massively all over the country. There were a lot of people who were out there pointing all of this out, discussing the difficulties of shipping discussing the challenges of finding people who were even willing to work. Well, now, somehow, the Biden administration, after initially saying all this was transitory inflation was, that it was short-lived, that we were going to be back to 2% soon, well, now Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen came out and said, you know what? Turns out the whole Biden administration was wrong about the path that inflation would take. And, Buck, the other big part of this is they got saved from the worst aspects of their decision because they wanted to spend another $5 trillion. They wanted to pour gasoline on the inflation fire. It wasn't just they were wrong. They were so wrong that we actually are lucky they couldn't do what they tried to do. Remember the Obama administration was so exciting for all the libs and the media because Obama, and it was amazing. But actually, you started to hear right after that the one thing they rammed through was uh, Obamacare, right? Not a single Republican vote. But then the drumbeat from the Democrats was always obstruction. Remember, they just kept saying obstruction yes. from Republicans. And if only Republicans would do common sense, whatever, you know, like common sense gun reform, common sense immigration, common sense tax reform, pay your fair share, whatever it was. But that was at least the talking point. The pro it was nonsense, but that was what they were going with. The problem the Biden administration has is that the obstruction, it it's like they're saying, guys, we were about to throw some gasoline canisters on this house on fire. Why did you stand in our way? Yes. Their way would have made the single most painful economic reality of our current circumstance worse without question. I mean, Joe Biden was going out there. We should maybe we could pull some of this just to remind everybody he used to go, ah, it's going to reduce inflation to spend five trillion dollars. Remember, we would do the loud whisper. That was, thing? That was one of his arguments he was for saying, build back better. You're right that it would reduce inflation. We're going to reduce inflation by having the government spend trillions more dollars than the government's already spending heading into an inflationary period, also known as the Biden administration. Clay, it is madness. And I and I keep telling everybody, I think. We're we're not through the storm. No, we're actually not. we're actually just in those initial stages out at sea where like the wind has shifted and the clouds are getting dark and it's looking rough out there. Listen to this. I mean, this is a remarkable acknowledgement that first of all, we we know that the Biden administration has no clue how to solve inflation. And one way that you know they have no clue how to solve it is they had no idea this was coming. These are the best and the brightest minds in the Biden economic uh, administration. Here is Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen telling you something that we were telling you over a year ago, and somehow, despite the fact that we're not trained economists, and neither are you guys out there, by and large, who are listening to us, we could all see it. The Biden administration couldn't. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. Well, um, look, I, I think I was wrong then about um, the path that inflation um, would take. As I mentioned, there have been unanticipated and large shocks to the economy that have boosted uh, energy and food prices and um, supply bottlenecks that have affected our economy badly. 
that I didn't at the time didn't fully understand. I mean, she has like one job in a way, right? To, That's to, all she has to, to do. fully understand exactly the dynamics that she just laid out there, Clay. And I think that, you know, the, there's always this this push pull. There's always this uh, built in excuse for any government uh, government monetary policy and and your treasury or economic official, anybody involved in that. And it is, well, if we create the perception of a recession, then we'll actually make it a reality. Right. If you tell people, guys, we're going to get inflation or guys, we need to settle down here uh, because we're heading for a, a, a downturn in the whatever in, in hiring, in the economy, in the housing market, then you make that a reality. The problem is that means that there's no corrective mechanism from the so-called experts that the Biden White House points to and says, well, the experts agree with me because the experts then turn around, meaning Treasury, meaning the Fed, and they say, well, I mean, we don't want to be pessimists here, right? We, we don't want to tell people we're heading into the very stormy waters we we're just talking about. And so that's how, Clay, this was the most obvious thing in recent monetary policy and economic uh, history, right? I mean, think about this. Yes. And it's like a surprise to Democrats and Biden. And not only that, as we were just saying, it would have been worse. We said this on the show. If Joe Manchin does not stand athwart the Democrat socialists and say, you guys really got to calm this thing down a little bit, I think we could have inflation 15%. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, I, I, I don't think there's any doubt. And a lot of the top business executives are pointing that out, that he was the only thing why it's not infinitely better than it is right now. And by the way, the only positive I can say, I mean, some of these forecasts that we're now getting are actually pretty terrifying. Uh, like, for instance, uh, Jamie Dimon, who is super smart at J.P. Morgan, uh, and obviously is much paid attention to in terms of his economic forecast. He writes a lot of letters uh, trying to lay out exactly what's going on. Let's listen to a couple of these cuts, Buck. I almost think that expectations are so bad that maybe it won't be as bad as everybody seems to expect. Uh, but look, he says right now the storm clouds are a hurricane down the road and you need to brace yourself. Listen, those three things, fiscally induced growth, QT, Ukraine war. So I, I'm going to change the storm clouds out there because I look, I'm an optimist. You know, I, I, I said there's storm clouds. They're big storm clouds. They're, it's a hurricane. It's we, right now. It's kind of sunny. Things are doing fine. You know, everyone thinks the the Fed can handle this. That hurricane is right out there down the road, coming our way. We just don't know if it's a minor one or Superstorm Sandy or uh, yeah, Sandy or or uh, Andrew or something like that. And it's you, you better brace yourself. Brace yourself from a guy who understands the markets and what actually affects your pocketbook. Right? You have a lot of. Democrat uh, economists in the administration who know that they have to say certain things if they want to have access and they want to be well considered in their uh, Democrat elitist circles. But Jamie Dimon and people like him, there's a pun there's there's a penalty rather for being wrong, which is that people don't listen to you. They think that, OK, you don't know what you're talking about when it comes to their money, which they care about. And he's saying it's going to get worse. And, and we look at this it is going to continue to get worse, unfortunately. There, there's nothing about the Democrat pr uh, proposals out there right now, the mentality. Clay, they don't accept any blame for any of this. They don't say, you know right. what, we we were wrong about a few things. We shouldn't have done a few of these things. Instead, they just kind of whine and talk about January 6th and hope that Joe Biden remembers where he is when he's speaking in public, which he doesn't even take interviews anymore, it seems. So what's that? It's all been about? over 100 days. Yeah, look, I think the biggest challenge is, and we've talked about this some, there are relatively few people in the Democratic Party who have any knowledge whatsoever of basic economic policy. I mean, elected officials. I don't even know who you would point to now and say, we've talked about this before, if you had to draft somebody in the Biden administration and say, hey, this person is super competent, even if I disagree with some of the decisions or perspectives they might have. I can't even, if we had a fantasy draft right now and we got to replace Joe Biden with one of his administration officials, I'm not even sure, Buck, who would be better than Biden. And Biden's awful. But who would you even point to? I mean, we know Merrick Garland's a disaster. You just heard Janet Yellen saying her single most important job, which is, hey, don't have two-generation worthy worst, 40 years worst inflation she totally whiffed on. Mayor Pete was on paternity leave as we had the greatest supply chain crisis of all time. 
Kamala Harris is probably the most incompetent vice president of all time. I mean, we can run through the list, health and human secretary. I mean, who do you even point to, Buck, and say, hey, you know what? This person in their particularly small scope has done a good job. Jennifer Granholm didn't know uh, the basic rudimentary knowledge of, uh, of how many barrels of oil we went through a day. I mean, you're the energy secretary. I just, I look at the list and they are, I, I've said this before, but you know, Abraham Lincoln had a team of rivals. Doris Kearns Goodwin wrote a great book about how stacked his cabinet was. Uh, Biden has got a team of incompetence. They're actually even worse than he is. This is what you have to do, though, if you're going to be a Democrat these days. You have to, in high office, you have to worship at the altar of climate change. You have to be a a stealth socialist. I mean, you want to be rich, of course, as the Democrat in the White House. You're going to take the book deal and everything else. But you want for everybody else, you know, got to, got to pay higher prices at the pump. It's good for the economy. You've, you, you've got to pay higher taxes. Well, that's your fair share, right? The, these are requirements. These are ideological um acid tests, litmus tests uh, for people to be able to hold these kinds of jobs. And because they've become so uh, insistent upon this, and instead of going for expertise, they go for party fealty, the people who are making these decisions are zealots and they're incompetent. And so when you have a whole group of incompetent zealots all sitting around together, I mean, didn't work out well for the Soviet Union. I'm just going to say it, right? You actually don't want people sitting around you who don't really know anything, and all they want to do is stick to the party line and orthodoxy so that they can maintain their position and their power. And I think that's unfortunately a window into the Biden regime right now. You don't have anybody. Look at all the disasters out there. You, you don't have anybody stepping out, Clay, from a, position, uh, you know, from a position in the Biden cabinet to say, we, we really do need to have a real discussion about changing course here. Or even say, you know what, if we don't change course, I'm going to resign because, you know, they all want to sit on the boards of those big uh, lib dominated companies afterwards. They all want that book deal. They want to be welcomed on PBS and CNN. And so the country suffers while they dance around and act like this isn't because they're a bunch of idiots, which unfortunately. Now, when I say idiots, it's really more about judgment and wisdom than it is about knowledge. I mean, some of them, you know, they went to fancy schools, whatever. That doesn't make you smart. Well the idea of modern monetary theory, which we've talked about some on this show, which essentially boils down to the idea that deficits don't matter and the government can print as much money, it was ascendant as early as January of this year and certainly all of last year during the Biden administration as they were spending money hand over fist. Now the reality has reared itself and it turns out that the economic lessons that we all learned throughout our entire lives you can't borrow massive amounts of money without consequential economic consequence. Uh, by the way, that's still true. Yeah, and, and, you know, we used to have these debates with the left um, where we'd say things like, well, why not just make the minimum wage $100 an hour, right? Just just to establish the point. Or why not just give everybody, okay, you're going to do, you're going to have the government paying people to stay home. Why not just give everybody, you know, 100 grand and see what that does? And the Democrats, instead of realizing how crazy that is, were like, yeah, let's let's do that, actually. Let's try that out. Let's take it's this to the outer limits. It's, it's madness that unfortunately people are seeing. You're seeing it every day, folks. We're not, you know, you're, you're actually feeling it, seeing it, looking at those numbers when you're at the pump, when you're paying for groceries, you're sending in that mortgage check. Biden, build back, not so better. That's for sure. We take inflation very seriously. Economists call all these things transitory effects. These one-time increases in prices are likely to, to have only transitory effects on inflation. There will be transitory impacts uh, in uh, as it relates to inflation. I believe it's transitory. A temporary or transitory impact. In the end, it, it will be transitory. These inflation uh, rises will be transitory, that they will come back down next year. Inflation is going to come down next year. Inflation will come down next year. Talk of inflation. The overwhelming consensus is going to pop up a little bit and then go back down. People fully expect this inflation to be uh, t uh, temporary. There's nobody suggesting there's unchecked inflation on the way. No serious economy. A symphony of wrong. Welcome back to Clay and Bach. That was all, you know, late in last year over the course of 2021. You had all the usual suspects there, Biden among them, saying, you know, rrr, rrr. Economist, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, it's it's just all nonsense. I mean, it is. I don't know if nincompoopery is a word, but I know nincompoop is. We could make one up, maybe. That was what was on display there, Clay. All of this. Not only was it predictable in terms of inflation, 
We predicted it. And now we have to sit here and look at them while they go, oh, gosh, who could have seen this coming? Well, we keep saying how many times can the experts be surprised by how bad the numbers are? I mean, if you just keep a tab, we could also probably put together a medley of experts say, man, this is worse than we expected. I don't have any sense. We're almost exactly, now that we're into June, five months away from the midterms. My concern now is that the Democrats, and we talked about this before, Buck, that they're going to decide to get one last bill in before they lose control of the House and the Senate. And if that bill is passed, I have monster concerns that it's only going to make inflation worse, but the Democrats are going to recognize this is our last chance to pass anything for two years. And depending on how things go in the 2024 presidential election, they may not be able to do anything for years and years to come. And so when you see the Joe Biden comments there and you recognize how out of touch and unable to come up with a coherent theory he is, I'm not confident that they're going to go quietly over the next five months. I think they're going to rush and try to pass something uh, that they are desperate to recognize would have no chance to pass for the next several years otherwise. 